welcome to worship if you'll stand in the house of the Lord. How many of you know that the Lord is a righteous tower? We can run into him and we are safe. We say, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Most high. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We say, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Most high. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Can we just lift our hands right now to Jesus? Never forget that when we meet together, he's already in the midst. We have come to worship you tonight, Lord. We've come to lay it at your feet tonight, God. We want you here, and we bless your name. Oh, we have come to worship the Lord. We have come to worship the Worship the Lord. We have come to worship. We have come to worship the Lord. Bow down before Him. Love and adore Him. We have come to worship. Oh, now listen, enter in. So enter in into the holy place. Enter in. Tell him he's worthy. He is worthy. He is holy. Come on, make it personal. You are worthy. You are holy. Come on, tell him you are worthy. You are worthy. You are holy. Come on, say, you are worthy. You are holy. You are wonderful. You are wonderful. You are worthy. You are holy. You are wonderful. It's 
Can we sing that again? Enter in. Enter in. Into the holy place. Enter in. And look upon his face. He is worthy. He is holy. He is wonderful. on in your own words can you just tell him tonight how wonderful he is he's listening right now we worship you Jesus come on just love on him Sunday night. Isn't it good to be in church tonight? Praise God. I appreciate your coming to be with us. Thank God for his blessings upon us. Thank God for blessing the service this morning. We want to go to the Lord in prayer. Remember those tonight that are sick. Continue to pray for Brian Hunt. As you know, the Lord blessed him with a kidney, but his whole body is trying to readjust to this difference that's taking place between his mind and his body. So pray that God would touch him and completely heal and restore his health. Also, my wife's sister, Alice Scott, is in need of God's touch tonight. Also, sister Nancy Espen needs uh, God's healing touch tonight as well. Um, this week, uh, Jeff Bremer had surgery again. Continue to pray for him, for his healing. Also, for Shelly Smith, she had surgery on her shoulder. So pray for her as well. I, I wanted to say to you tonight, I know we're just a few in number, kind of looks like lockdown from last year. That's about how it was when we'd come in April. 
but uh, some folks have, have talked, and every time I turn around, I hear somebody talking about that we've had an outbreak in our church. And that's not true. We've had about 10 people that's uh, been infected with COVID. In fact, I think they're uh, coming out of quarantine this weekend or tomorrow, and just about every one of them has had very mild cases. Some said they didn't have any symptoms at all, and I haven't had one person to tell me they got it from our church. They have told me they have gotten it from work, from uh, a medical facility. They've gotten it from somewhere else, not here. So the virus is not in this building. The virus is not here. Uh, they got it somewhere else, and they stayed home after they got it. So don't be afraid to come to church thinking we've got a spreading going on, a super spreader, because we've had church for two weeks now. No one else has gotten sick. So I hope you understand that tonight. I, am, I take very seriously caring for our church, for our congregation, and for my family. And if there was any danger, if there were, I've talked to other pastors, they would have 35, 40 and more people infected with this virus. And of course they had to shut down and that's what we would have to do as well. When you have 10 people, that's only about three families and some of them got it from other family members uh, and most of them are mild and they stayed home. There's no need for the rest of us to stay home. No need for the rest of us to go in lockdown. And then the sad thing of that is those that don't come to church, they go everywhere else. Uh, you can get this because it's transmittable through other people. So anywhere there's people, there's the possibility you could get COVID. Whether you go to a restaurant or Walmart or to work or anywhere else. So I've been, I've been very reluctant to say anything. But since we're few in number tonight, I can say it and run. You know, I think I can get away from you. I'm just telling you out of my heart tonight that uh, I'm not afraid, and I thank God for keeping us, and I believe he's still blessing us. As I mentioned, some churches have had 40 and 50. Amen. 40 and 50 that's been infected. For us to have 10 after a year, more than a year, we've been blessed. We have been blessed, and we thank God for that. And all these are on the men. They're all telling me, hey, we're okay. It, it feels like a sinus infection or a bad cold, and some say, I don't have any symptoms at all, and, but they're staying quarantined until they have tested negative, and then they're coming back to church. I just want to get that out there. I know that some folks might be watching online tonight. Come on in. The water's fine. Come on back to the house of God. Everything's okay because you could very easily catch this virus somewhere else, but thank God it's going down, going away. You don't hear as near as many people getting this virus, and those that do are not getting nearly as sick as they were a year ago. We thank God for that. We can't live in fear. There's always something. It's dangerous to get in your vehicle and get out on the highway. If you haven't noticed that, it's dangerous. People drive crazy, so it's more dangerous for you to drive your vehicle than it is for you to come to church and to worship God. Amen. Thank God that he has blessed us and kept us and we can be here tonight once again. Would you stand as we go to the Lord in prayer and pray for all that are sick tonight. We miss the families that are not here. They're anxious to get back to church and uh, we're not going to treat them like lepers. They have now become immune to this virus so they've gotten better and gotten stronger and thank God for that and we're going to continue to get well and be strong in the Lord. The Lord is coming. That's my concern. We are running out of time. The clock is ticking. The hour's late. The night is far spent. The Bible said the day is at hand. So Jesus could come. I can't think of a better place to leave this world from than the house of God. Praise the Lord. Do you have unspoken requests tonight? No lift of hand. Let's believe tonight for these that are sick. Pray for those that are lost above all that God will touch them. Father, we thank you tonight. We are so blessed of you. Thank you for abiding with us and keeping us. We pray for your touch tonight upon all that are sick, those that want to be in church but are not able to be here. Touch them now. We ask you to comfort those that are grieving and brokenhearted. We ask you to strengthen those that are weak tonight. We pray, God, for victory and overcoming power. Help us, Lord, tonight to restore. Have the song restored in our heart and joy in our soul. We ask you to move tonight, Lord, on this service. Blessing, anointing, every song, every singer, every musician, every word that's spoken. Let the anointing of God flow mightily upon us. We give you praise. We give you glory and honor for all these things. For it's in the lovely and holy name 
in Jesus Christ we pray and ask it all. Amen and amen. Praise God. Would you take a moment, welcome one another. Matthew's Church of God, we're delighted to have you tonight. Once more, to all the mothers, happy Mother's Day. The first commandment with our promise, Exodus 20:12 says, Honor your father and mother, so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. If you're still blessed enough to have your parents around, or they're close by, it blesses the Lord when you honor your parents. See, he tells us, that if you do this, I will do that. Wouldn't you like to honor the Lord so that you may live long in the land, this land that the Lord is giving you? He's promised us so much more than just this. This can't be it, right? Because if this is it, then we have nothing to live for. He's promised us so much more that is well worth doing everything that he has directed us to do. Let's go to the Lord who our ties and offerings. Let's pray. Almighty, gracious, heavenly Father, Lord, once again we come to you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done for us, Lord. We thank you for the precious blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed on the cross. The most precious blood that washes us white as snow, Lord, cleanses us from sin. What could wash away our sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus, Lord. Father, I pray that you would touch the man of God once again, Lord, as he brings the word, Lord. Touch the monies that we receive here. Make it go far in your kingdom, Lord. Touch the families that give, Lord. And I'll be sure to praise you for it all. In the lovely name of Jesus, amen.
Lord. What a true song that is. Take you to the Lord in prayer. It makes all the difference in the world when we pray and cast our cares on Him. Praise the Lord for His blessings. Good to see Beverly back tonight. She came all the way from Georgia. You talk about dedication. Came all the way from Georgia today to be with us in service tonight. We've had 12-year-old Alex working back in the sound booth, working on the banners for our, our streaming services. God's going to find somebody to get the work done. Amen. He's going to find somebody. Thank God that he has blessed us for these dedicated folks. Would you stand once again for the reading of the Word of God? I'm reading tonight from the book of Acts chapter 16, beginning with verse 16. And it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul around us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. This did she many days. But Paul, being grieved and grieved, turned and said in, into the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And came out the same hour. When her master saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers and brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. When they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed, sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loosed. I want to speak tonight on the subject of the prison of praise. Would you ask God's anointing tonight on his word? Father, we thank you tonight for your wonderful blessings upon us. Lord, we belong to you. We're not our own. We've been bought for such a great price. Help us, Lord, to learn that in this world there will be tribulation, to understand there's going to be times of difficulty, but, oh, God, to know that praise is always in order, that when we praise you, you inhabit those praises. You come down in the midst of your people. On this Sunday night, we pray, God, that you would fill this house with your glory. Let the anointing of the Holy Ghost flow mightily and freely. We pray, God, that you would touch every heart and every soul, Renew our minds, renew our strength. We'll praise you, Lord, for all these things. For it's in the lovely, holy name of Jesus Christ we pray and ask it all. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Paul and Silas were in an oppressive prison of suffering. But while they were in prison, of all places, they experienced the power of God. They transformed a prison of pain into a prison of praise. It may be that somebody is here tonight who is locked away in a prison of pain and you see no way out. I want to show you tonight in the word of God how that God can take your pain and how he can turn it into praise for his glory. That no matter what you're going through tonight, God can turn the situation around. He is a way maker. He is a problem solver. He is an ever present help in trouble. When Paul and Silas arrived along with their entourage into the city of Philippi, they expected great things to happen. There's nothing like having great expectations. There's nothing like excitement. There's nothing like looking forward to some wonderful things to take place. And after all, they had no reason not to feel otherwise because they had clearly heard from God. They were in the will of God, fulfilling the plan of God. His will was further revealed when Lydia in that city and some others came 
to faith in Christ. So they knew they were in the right place at the right time. Souls were being saved. The Lord was establishing the church of God at Philippi. Everything was going well. But it didn't take long for their mission to turn into misery. How many times has your mission turned into misery? Paul and Silas were there to preach the gospel, simply obeying the will and the word of God, and then they were falsely accused. The devil is the accuser of the brethren. They had made their living, these men had, by taking advantage of this young girl who was possessed of a devil, a spirit of divination, a soothsayer, a fortune teller, and they were using her and using this demonic spirit in her to get great gain. But this spirit was cast out by the apostle Paul. He recognized the devil for who he is. We need to know the difference. The Bible says try the spirit because not every spirit is of God. There are evil spirits. There are demonic spirits. And we need to know the Holy Spirit. We need to know the spirit of God. And there was nothing they said about Paul and Silas that was true. The devil's a liar. He's the father of lies. He's lied from the beginning. They were just simply preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. They were simply preaching the truth and the word of God. And this young girl was set free from her bondage. Didn't matter that these accusations were false because some people are gonna believe the worst. When the devil tells a lie, there's always gonna be somebody to believe the lie. The devil lied about them. They used these men to come against them. And when the people of Philippi heard these false accusations, when they heard what these men were saying, they turned on Paul and Silas like a pack of rabid dogs. And the scripture says they took them to court, immediately took them to a trial. And Paul and Silas were beaten. They were thrown into a prison of misery. The word, the scripture says they were cast into prison. That word cast means to throw something with no regard for, for where it lands. That they just threw them in there, didn't worry about them landing, didn't worry about them being hurt any further. They just cast them into the prison, beaten and thrown in among common criminals for simply preaching the gospel of Christ. And I want to tell you tonight, we're not far from that. We're not far from that in these last days. They want to shut down the church and shut down the gospel of Christ. He wants to silence the preachers of the gospel. They were handed over to the jailer. The Bible said they were thrust, thrust into the inner prison. Their feet were locked in shackles and stocks. There was no, nothing there that was pleasant about this prison. It was nothing like the prisons that are today. In fact, modern prisons would seem like a five-star resort compared to what they were thrown into, the prison they were cast into. They were thrown into a deep, dark, and nasty cell. They were chained in all this mud and all this filth and human waste. They were chained in this dungeon. It was damp, it was dark, it was dreary, it was disgusting. It was a dangerous dungeon that they were in. They were there of no, no uh, thing of their own fault. They didn't do anything to deserve this. They didn't do anything to deserve what had happened to them. They were faithful, obedient servants of Jesus Christ. God never said that in this life we would have it easy. He never said to expect your life to be a, a bowl of cherries, that everything will be wonderful. Somebody said that life is a bowl of cherries, it's full of pits. There's a lot of pits, a lot of pitfalls in this world. Jesus said that trouble would not just be a possibility. He said trouble will be an absolute certainty. He said in this world, you will have tribulation. You won't just possibly have trouble. He said you are going to have trouble. Everybody, regardless of your spiritual standing, you're going to have trouble. There'll be times when you're doing the best that you know how to do living the best that you know how to live, but you end up in a prison of misery of no fault of your own. It will be worse than you ever imagined. How could this ever happen to me? But God can turn your prison of, of misery into a prison of ministry. God's got a plan for you. He's got a plan for me. Paul and Silas, they were hurting. They were human beings just like we are. 
They were humiliated as to what had happened to them. And they had followed the Lord to Philippi. You know how most of us, uh, most of us would be. We would, we would complain to God. We'd say, oh God, I've, I've been trying to live right. I've been trying to do right. I've been trying to treat people right. I don't understand why this is happening to me. I'm sure those thoughts might have came to their mind. They were now chained among the prisoners in a cruel prison situation. And in their hour of need, there was nobody in the prison that could help them. The jailer wasn't going to help them. Those in the city weren't going to help them. So they turned to the only source that was available to them. They turned to the only place that they knew to turn to. They turned to God for their help. Praise God. I want to tell you tonight, you can always turn to God for your help. He's an ever present help in the time of need and trouble. He's always there for you. They turned to God and they lifted up their hearts in in prayer unto the Lord. You see, Paul and Silas knew something that so many believers never really get a handle on. They knew the best place to find help in a difficult situation was the throne of grace. God's got grace sufficient for you He's got grace sufficient for me. He's got mercy that endure forever. When you call, he'll answer. You that are mothers, you that are fathers, when your child gets into trouble, you hear that cry, you go to the rescue. And that's what our father does in heaven. When he hears us cry, he comes to our rescue. He doesn't turn a deaf ear. He doesn't turn away and say, tough it out. You've got yourself in this situation. It's your problem to deal with. He said, I'm coming to your rescue. I'm coming to deliver you. I'm coming to set you free. Our Lord is someone who cares. Our Lord is someone who hears our prayers. Our Lord is someone who answers our prayers. As they prayed, their prison was transformed from a place of pain to a place of praise. You talk about interior decorating. You talk about doing some remodeling. This prison became a church house. This jail house became a church house because anywhere you are that you begin to praise God, he'll inhabit those praises. He'll come down to where you are. And Paul and Silas, they started out singing praise to God. How many of you know that's one of the hardest things to do when you're in pain, when you're in darkness, when you're in despair to try to get a song to come out. But they began to sing songs of praise, not songs of sadness, not songs songs of gloom and doom and despair, not songs of woe is me, not songs of why me, but they sing praise unto the Lord. You can praise God all night long and never exhaust the reasons to praise him. He's worthy of our highest praise. He's worthy of exaltation. They simply put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness and they praise the Lord despite being falsely accused, despite being thrown in the prison. They sang praises to God. Sometimes we can have the least little problem. Sometimes we can have the least little setback. We're ready to quit God. We're ready to quit the church. We're ready to join up with the world. But God help us to have enough victory in our lives that when trouble comes, we'll praise God anyhow. We'll worship God anyhow. That's the best time to praise Him. In the darkness, in the dungeon, in despair, in depression. Praise God and He'll lift you up out of your dungeon of despair. God will give you a song even in the midnight hour. Psalm 42 and 8, yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime and in the night his song shall be with me and my prayer unto the God of my life. Praise God. Charles Spurgeon said, any fool can sing in the day. It is easy to sing when we can read the notes by daylight. But the skillful singer is he who can sing when there is not a ray of light to read by. Songs in the night come only from God. They are not in the power of men. Oh, when you can sing in the night, you know there's something going on right between you and God. When you can sing through the valley, when you can sing through the trouble, when you can sing through the pain, when you can sing through the setback, when you can sing through accusations, when you can sing through the attacks of the devil, when you can sing praise to God, you know that something has got 
gotten a hold of you and changed you and transformed you. I want to tell you, everybody can't do that. Everybody doesn't do that. But those who know him, those that do know their God, shall be strong and do exploits. He'll give you a song in the valley when you're facing the giant. He'll give you a song in the storm when the wind is blowing. He'll give you a song when the fire has been heated up seven times or hotter. He'll give you a song to sing. I want to tell you tonight, it's time to start singing. It's time to start singing unto the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul and all that is within me. Don't get the tuck head. Don't start looking down, but looking up and sing how great thou art. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is he. Sing praise to the Lord because he will inhabit those praises. God can turn your sigh into a song. He can turn your trial into a testimony. He can turn your heartache into a hallelujah. When the pressure is on, we've got to learn to praise him. You've got to praise him, got to praise him. Praise him when the heat is on. Praise him when the storm is raging. Praise him in the midnight hour. And that's what they did. Verse 25, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. And sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. The prisoners were listening. I want to tell you tonight, they were amazed by what they were hearing. They were amazed by the songs that were coming out of that cell. They were amazed by the voices they were hearing of praise unto God. They knew Paul and Silas had been severely beaten. They were probably treated worse than the worst of criminals in that prison. They were thrown carelessly into the prison and locked down with stocks in the prison. Yet they were not moaning and groaning. They were singing praise unto God. Let me tell you, people are listening. People are listening. People are listening. They want to hear what's coming out of our mouths. They want to hear what's going on in our lives. How are we responding to our prison experiences? How are we responding to trouble? They're watching us. They're listening to us. They want to see how we're responding. We can talk the talk, but are we walking the walk? We can talk about how spiritual we are, but it's when the storm comes, when the prison experience comes, when the darkness of the night comes, the world watches and they say, let's see you do something now let's see how spiritual you are now and then you say somebody hit the key of G because I feel like singing I feel like traveling on I feel like singing victory in Jesus let the world hear you praising God when they think you ought to be giving up when they think you ought to be throwing in the towel you say I'm going to praise God anyhow I'm going to praise him in the midst of all that's going on Some believers fall to pieces when trouble comes. But if you can praise the Lord in your prison, you will have a powerful testimony that people want and need to hear. You know, when you're really going through something, you don't want to talk to somebody that's defeated. You don't want to talk to somebody in despair. You want to talk to somebody that's been there, done that, and come out of that. You want to talk to somebody who's faced that lion who's faced that giant, who's faced that valley. You want to talk to somebody who's overcome and say, how did you do it? And all you can tell them, I did it by praising the Lord. I did it by singing praise to God. I did it by lifting up my voice unto the Lord. I did it by standing strong in the faith. That's how we get out. You're not going to get out by looking down and looking around and looking at others. You're going to get out by walking out of that valley, lifting your hands and praising God. That's how you get out. That's how the victory is won. A powerful testimony testifies to the fact that God is real. If he's real on Sunday, he's real on Monday. He's real every day, everywhere you go. He is God and he always will be God even in the worst of times. But regardless of what we're facing, God can use our situation to help someone else. How encouraging it is. We love to to read the stories of how somebody has overcome adversity. We're inspired by that. How somebody had their back against the wall, the bottom fell out, the wheels came off. When they had nothing and God brought them out of of despair. We love to hear those wonderful inspirational stories. Usually when 
young children. We want to tell them stories. We don't have any problem telling them about David and Goliath. We don't have any problem telling them about the three Hebrew children in the fiery furnace or Daniel in the den of lions. It's inspirational because we say this is what God can do and what he's done for others, he'll do it for you. So we're there to show that God is an ever-present help in trouble. Maybe that's the reason why we got in the situation to start with. Verse 26, and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loosed. When I read that, I thought about Acts 4.31. They had a prayer meeting. In Acts 4.31, it said when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and spake the word of God with boldness. I want to tell you tonight, when we pray, something happens. It shakes the foundations. It moves the enemy back. It opens doors that no door could not be opened before. When you pray, God does mighty things. Suddenly the foundations of the prison begin to shake immediately it happened. You know, sometimes we, we, get, we get a little bit impatient. We want everything to happen right now, and when it doesn't, we give up. But there are times when God does immediate things. There are times when he does things instantly, and I'm thankful for that. It says immediately. That verse is packed with power. Suddenly, God moved in the situation. I believe God could suddenly move in our nation, in the world, if people would turn to God, but instead of turning to God, they're turning further away from God and they're getting deeper and deeper into sin and into judgment. One moment, all the prisoners were chained. One moment, they're all bound in the prison and the next moment, they're all free. The chains fell off. In just a moment of time, things went from bleak to better. The power of God changed the situation. Let me tell you, if he did that in Acts 16, he can do it today. If he changed it then, he can change it now. God may change your situation tonight. I don't know what you're going through or what you're facing, but all oh, what he's done for others, he'll do for you. The God of Paul and Silas is our God and he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think. He has a plan to set you free. He hasn't forgotten about you. He knows where you are. He knows the pressure that you feel. He knows the misery of the prison that you're in and he knows exactly how and when to set you free. God allowed Paul and Silas to go into prison to experience that situation for a reason, for a purpose. Everything that happens is not by accident. It's not just by coincidence. Our steps are ordered by the Lord. And God doesn't waste anything. It doesn't matter what situation you get in, God doesn't waste it. Whatever we go through, even if it's for evil, even if it's something the devil has brought against us, God will turn it around for our good and for his glory. Paul and Silas were in Philippi working for God, but God works in mysterious ways, his wonders to perform. God used everything that happened to Paul and Silas, everything Back when we were in the eastern part of the state many years ago, we would go to, to a pig picking and never been to one of those hog killings before. I was amazed how that they use everything that belongs to the pig. They said the only thing that they didn't use was the oink of the pig. They use everything. People eat pig's feet and pig's knuckles and they use the intestines, chitlins. They, they use everything, the sow's meat, the brains. They use it all, the snout, every part of the pig. They'll use it. I like the barbecue. I like the breast on the chicken and the steak on the cow. I want to leave the chitlins and the brains and the knuckles and the feet all alone. I don't want any part of that. But they use everything that has to do with the hog. God uses everything that happens into our life. He'll even use the oink. He'll use the, the old me. He'll use the ouch. He'll use whatever we're going through and he'll turn it around for his glory. And the, the, the Lord brought them into this city for a purpose to save the jailer and his family. Thank God for that. He was so glad. At one moment, he, he is an employee of the penal institution. At one moment, he is, he is ordered to take care and, and to keep Paul and Silas safe. And the next 
next moment he's saved and his family's saved and his family's baptized and he's praising God because God brought Paul and Silas to Philippi. Oh, praise God. He has brought people to where we are. He's brought them in our path for a purpose, to testify to the city officials. They needed to hear the gospel as well and to encourage the saints and to teach the saints that God is greater than any prison, any pain, any problem that we face to show us that God is great and great to be praised. Sometimes we never get the answer. We never get the answer to the why questions. We want to know why. We don't get the answer. Sometimes God will send you into prison experience just for his own purposes. You may never know why these things have happened to you. You may never know why you had to go through what you went through, but the only thing that really matters is that God is honored and receives the glory. For Psalm 46, one and two, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, we're not gonna be afraid. What we face in life is a part of God's plan. He knows everything that's going to happen before it ever happens. It's the foreknowledge of God. He's Adonai, he's sovereign God. David said, every time I sit down and get up, every time I come in and go out, God sees it. He knows everything about us. There's nothing hid from him. And he has a plan. He has a purpose. He has a good plan. He knows exactly what he is doing. And he said, you can trust him with all your heart. Don't doubt him. Don't say, God, I don't understand why you're doing this. Just say, praise God. I know you've got a plan. I know you've got a purpose. I know you're going to work it out. Even when things hurt us, even when things disappoint us, they're meant to make us grow. They're meant to make us stronger in the Lord, to shape our lives for his glory. When the prison door slams behind you, as it did for Paul and Silas, when you're shackled in pain and problems, you can still praise God because he's still worthy of praise even in our prison. You remembered what he's done before. You begin to praise him. God, I know you've been here before. I know you've delivered me before. Here I'm in a situation again. I don't understand it, but I'm gonna praise you. I don't know how things are gonna turn out. It may not even turn out the way I think they ought to turn out, but I'm gonna praise you anyhow. I'm gonna bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's within me. I'm gonna worship him and praise him in the good times and in the bad times. Regardless of what happens, God is going to receive the praise. Hallelujah. I want our musicians to come if they will. There was a Persian king that rose out of a poverty-stricken home to the glory of a royal throne. As he was crowned king, he sent his servants back to the old shack that he grew up in where they would find relics that were left behind. He gave them orders to bring those back to the palace. They had found some broken toys. They found a patched shirt. They had found a crude wooden bowl and many worthless relics of his childhood. That king arranged all of these relics in a room, and every day he would spend an hour in that room among all those relics that reminded him of his humble beginning. And he hung a prayer on the wall with the words, lest I forget, lest I forget. We must never forget where he's brought us from. We must never forget the rock from which we were hewn. We must never forget the pit from which we were dug. We must never forget what he's done for us. We're here tonight as a testimony of his grace and mercy and love for us. Would you stand with me, please? Because when we remember what he's brought us from and brought us through, it turns our prison of misery into a prison of praise. We begin to praise God for his blessings. God has been so good to us. He's been better to us than we deserve, amen? He's been so good to us. Would you like to come tonight and just spend a moment of time in prayer just praising the Lord for his blessings? Let him turn your prison of misery into a prison of praise. Magnify the Lord. He'll bring you out. I've learned to trust in God through it all. Yes. 
I would.